All right, so I am here in the Hamptons at Chefs and Champagne with none other than Emeril Lagasse, who started with how to boil water. I remember watching you make hamburgers and learning the tricks of the trade, and then Emeril Live. So how do you start and well, how to go? I never really uh, expected to happen what happened. Uh, I never expected to really do how to boil water. Um, after I did the first series, uh, the president at the time, Rhys Schoenfeld, called me and he said, look, I got good news and bad news. Good news is that you probably should do more television because you're not bad at it. The, uh, the bad news is this, you're overqualified for how to boil water, so uh, you're going to have to find a new gig. So I was kind of thought my television days would be over right then and there. But uh, uh, from there, we, you know, we did um, Essence of Emerald. We had 12 seasons of Essence of Emerald. 10 seasons of Emerald Live, uh, lots of fun, lots of memories, but uh, it's not over. So uh, I just finished a, a brand new show called Emerald's Table, the hottest reservation on television because instead of 200 people in the audience and a band, I have five seats at a counter with me and I sort of just uh, just cook and do my thing. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun doing it. Um, I just opened uh, an Italian concept uh, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, not too far from your old neck of the woods. My neck of the woods in Philly. What's on the menu there in Bethlehem? All kinds of great stuff. So it's sort of a little memories of my Italian journeys. Um, uh, we just broke ground in another restaurant in Charlotte. I mean, it's, I'm busy. I, I mean, thank God. Um, doing a lot of work on Good Morning America, of course, and been doing that for 14 years, almost 15 years now. We're just having fun. What do you have to say about your friend Emeril? Emeril colleagues tonight he's being Emerald honored as a uh, living legend is uh, bigger than life I know him all for maybe 20 we know each other for 25 so since I moved to America I uh, met him all uh, early in my early days when I was at the uh, Plaza Atene but also at La Cirque when I was at La Cirque in New York and he used to come with Charlie Trotter the two of them was inseparable now how do you what, how did the ideas come to keep each restaurant different? Is there something that you want to make sure this has to be different, or is there uh, something that's always your signature? Here's the Emerald signature, and let's no, keep this straight. You know, I, I, it's you know, it's a lot about. It's like a child. You know, it's like it. They all have their own heart, their own soul. Uh, they all have their own identity. Uh, even though the Emerald name might be in it, whether it's Emerald's Table or Emerald's Delmonico. Uh, but they're all truly uh, unique to, to what they are and where they are. So Spencer, you are the chef over at Emeril's Delmonico. How is it working with Emeril? I think it's fantastic. I couldn't imagine working for a nicer guy. I mean, he's got a heart of gold. He's, you know, he's, he's fierce, he treats his people very well. Uh, and it, you just can't help but be loyal and want to you know, do your absolute best to make him happy. Now, do you work on the menu with him? Do you, do you create it? Do you guys do it together? How's that process? I'm, I'm very lucky. I have a lot of freedom. All the, all the chefs in the restaurants kind of have their own. Each, each restaurant has its own personality, so we kind of work in that. But, of course, obviously, his, his, he has the final say. Have you Now, you're here in the Hamptons. Have you had a chance to enjoy the area at all, or, or you're, you're in for the day? I'm You've got to go. Turning around uh, at the end of the event tonight, I've got to be in Austin tomorrow shooting, uh, shooting television. Shooting so. TV tomorrow. Yeah. Beyond... You know, the chefs in the event. James Beard, you're being honored. How does it feel to be honored by your peers? I mean, folks that you would looked up to maybe as you were a young chef. And how, did, how does that feel today? I mean, it's, I've been involved with the Beard Foundation for a long time and uh, have done a lot of dinners at the Beard House and other chefs' restaurants, my own restaurants. Uh, seeing uh, young talent evolve and to prosper. Um, to me, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great honor to not only be honored by peers, but uh, people that have been honored in the past, Daniel Ballou, Martha Stewart, Wolfgang Puck, I could go on and on and on. Um, you know, those are some, uh, some pretty serious names in the, in the industry. So I'm, I'm delighted to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward to the event. Tonight, we're going to celebrate a top chef, Emeril, you know, one of the chefs that really started all this, I feel like. What could be better with the James Beard Foundation that gives out great scholarship, done so much for our industry, and with a great friend like Emeril Lagasse. So, see all my fellow chefs, this is going to be great. And I say, well, what am I going to cook for Emeril today? So, I, I was doing some suckling pig, and I had like three head of suckling pig, I didn't know what to do with it. So, I put the three head of suckling pig in a pot. I made, uh, of course, I made a mirepoix vegetable, 
line the whole pot with bacons, but lines of bacons. And then after I put the heads, I put endives, and I cover that with bacon also, and I put that in the oven for four hours. So you can never have enough bacon, and? And I brought the whole pan with the three head of suckling pig on the table with the endive, the bacons, the bacon that melted over the endive and all that, and the heads was all comfy, and uh, that was the kind of food they like, you know what I mean? Sounds delicious. They think they can definitely smell, see, but also lick its finger with. Talking about food now. When you are at home and the chef's jacket comes off, because I assume you don't wear that in your own kitchen, no. what is your go-to thing to whip together that's just, it's a long day, I need to make, I want, what is that? If it's not some sort of quick pasta of fresh ingredients that I have around, uh, if it's a planned staple, there's nothing better than a perfect roast chicken. It's nice and simple. That's one of the French staples, you know, chicken, little potato, nice it's glass of wine. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Thank you so much. Would you say hi to the Hamptons.com gang out there? They'd love that. Hello, Hamptons.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>